trying to make YouTube videos while you have children. Whew. Almost impossible. What is up guys, my name is Keenan, and today I got a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. A video that I love watching other uh, YouTubers and photographers make, and uh, it is what is in my camera bag. So, what's in my camera bag? Before we get into the bag, let's talk about the tripod that goes on the outside of the bag. This is a KNF Concept uh, little tripod here. It's a nice little tripod, actually. Uh, it's less than 100 bucks. I think it was like 85 bucks. Um, it's got a nice uh, pan head on the top, ball swivel guy. And uh, yeah, it's a great little tripod. Now, something to uh, consider when you're looking at tripods. Uh, is don't go buy the cheapest one you have or you cheapest one you can find because you know you're throwing a couple thousand dollars worth of camera equipment on top of these things and uh, i learned the hard way um, and the wind can blow them over and smash your lenses to pieces which is what happened to me so invest in a good tripod uh, and this knf concept has been an excellent one for me it's super sturdy it's got a, a little hook oh a little hook down here at the bottom you can hang your bag from uh, just to plant it to the ground a little more sturdy and the legs, you know, the legs go all over the place and the neck extends and, you know, all that stuff. So, good. Like that tripod. Now, the bag that I'm using is a Tubu, a Tubu bag. Uh, I bought this off Amazon a little while ago. And it's a great little bag. Uh, a couple of things that I'm looking for in a bag. It's a lightweight bag. Uh, one that stands up by itself, a bag that tips over all the time drives me crazy. My OC, OCD can't handle it. Uh, so this one stands up nice. It isn't very lightweight, which is why I kind of have an issue with it. Other than that, it's a great bag. Oh, also, it's pretty big, as you can see. I mean, when you pack it with gear, it's like, and it looks very photographer-ish. Uh, so it's hard to walk around uh, with this backpack on and pretty much everybody knows that you're carrying camera gear or, you know, you're just carrying around a big ass bag. Uh, I like this little bag though of the bags that I own. It is the best one, um, but it's not my favorite. I haven't found the perfect bag yet. So anyway, jumping into the bag, we have a headlight, little head torch, head uh, headlight. Uh, yeah, so I, I get to, I do a lot of landscape photography and when I get to location super early in the morning before the sun's come up, um, you have to have a headlight to walk around and see where you're going so that you can compose your shot so that when the sun does come up, you're in location with the camera set up, ready to go. So having a flashlight is imperative for me. Inside this guy, we got a little Hero 2 GoPro. You know, I don't even know why I carry this thing around anymore. I never use it. Um, I probably will actually, after this video, remove it from my bag, but it's a Hero 2. Um, it takes 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Uh, you know, it's a GoPro. It looks like a GoPro. It acts like a GoPro. And I probably won't be putting that back. I'm gonna break stuff on my desk. Uh, but I do use it every once in a while. I used to, used to use it a lot, not so much anymore. Here we got a Seagate uh, four terabyte hard drive. Is that focused in? Focus. Seagate, four terabyte. Uh, it was pretty cheap. It's nice to back up your footage. Uh, holds lots of lots of uh, lots of video, lots of photos. I think I have like uh, 8,000 photos on that drive, and uh, it's barely even used any of it. So uh, great. And here we got a little um, what do you call these? Quick strap, quick release strap. I don't know what people call them these days. I like them. I don't like the uh, the camera straps that you get like from Canon or Nikon. They I don't like them hanging around my neck. This has uh, neoprene, so you know sits on your shoulder. It doesn't slide off. You can throw it over your head, and then you can walk around when you need your camera. Right there. I like this a lot more than the Canon uh, Canon straps, and uh, this was super cheap. It was like ten bucks or something like that. So awesome, awesome to have. Oh. The other reason that I got this bag, and the reason I could have gone with something a lot smaller, the reason that I bought this bag, and the only reason that I continue to use this bag, is it fits a 17-inch 
laptop, a full size 17 inch laptop. Um, now I don't obviously take this around if I'm gonna go for a hike or something, I don't take this with me. Uh, but it is nice, like I got a wedding coming up uh, at the end of this month and uh, I will take that with me and probably leave it in the car, uh, but I can, you know, dump footage onto it, uh, hook up to the hard drive here and, uh, you know, just dump footage onto it so that I have a backup for my backup, which is always good. Always have a backup for your backup. Inside the money hole here. Uh, let's go with the camera stuff first. Um, I've got a couple of different uh, bodies in here. I don't always use all of these. Uh, this is like my little vlogging rig, the Sony Alpha 5100. It's a great camera. I did a video on this on my channel. Uh, you should go check it out. I'll link it down in the video description below. Uh, maybe I'll put it in a YouTube card. I don't know how to do that yet, but if I figure that out, I'll put it up there. If not, it'll be in the video description. Anyway, Alpha 5100 camera. It's a great little camera. Uh, a couple of problems with it. The biggest one being the battery life is horrible. It's the worst battery life of any camera I have ever used, ever. Um, but I mean, for what you're paying for in this little guy, it's a great little camera. It's silent, uh, pretty quiet shutter. Uh, there's no headphone jack, which is a bummer. Uh, but, you know, this little uh, 18 to 55 kit lens that comes with it is a great little camera body. I like that camera. Uh, here in the main par part of the top, I would normally keep my 80D, which you're watching this on right now, and attached to it is the Sigma 17 to 50 2.8, which is a great uh, kit lens replacement. Um, my tripod blew over in the wind a few years back, and the 18 135 kit lens I had exploded. So that's why you need to make sure you get a nice tripod so you don't uh, learn the hard way like I did. So that won't happen again. Unfortunately, that lens is completely destroyed and I had to throw it out. But uh, yeah, so the 17 to 50 from Sigma F2.8 would normally go right here with the 80D and uh, love that combination. Uh, the 17 to 50 probably stays on my camera 75% mm, of the time, maybe a little more. Uh, other than that, we have the Boya BY-M1 uh, lapel microphone. It's a great little microphone. It's like 20 bucks, and uh, you're listening to it right now. It's attached here, <whistles> plugged straight, straight into the camera there, and uh, it sounds great. I like it for 20 bucks. Um, hooks up to your smartphone and all that. I did a video on that. Did I do a video on that? I think I did a video on that. I don't know if I uploaded it or not, but you, you'll probably find it. Uh, I'll, I'll link it below if I have. Um, anyway, what else we got? Lenses. We got the 85mm Prime uh, 1.8. Now, whoo -hoo, I love this lens because the bokeh that you get out at 85mm on a crop body, it's equivalent to 105mm-ish, something like that. But the, uh, the bokeh you get out of this thing at 1.8 at that high of a compression, is just money. It is a money lens. Love this guy. Um, strongly recommend getting this one. Uh, the problem I have with this one um, is it was slightly back focusing, unfortunately. Uh, in the Canon 80D, you are able to adjust for that. So you can, you know, it nails focus now on that camera. Uh, so it's not an issue, but keep that in mind. It might need to be calibrated to the body. Uh, apparently that's a, a widely known issue with that 85 or at least I've heard it was next we have the 50 millimeter f 1.4 now at 1.4 the best thing about this lens about 1.4 is obviously the bokeh is just the bokeh delicious silky smooth goodness uh, just awesome little portrait lens the but uh, the best thing about 1.4 did I say 1.2 before 1.4 best thing about 1.4 is that you can shoot in almost a completely dark room uh, with a relatively low ISO. And it's amazing what you can pull out, even on a crop sensor body, uh, you know, at 1.4, it's, you know, crazy how low of light you can shoot with this. Now this lens is tack, tack sharp. The 85 is just tack sharp as well. Uh, it does suffer from chromatic aberration though. So keep that in mind, that can be corrected in post, so it's not a huge, huge deal. But at f1.4, uh, it does suffer from quite a bit of it, so you have to correct that in post. Uh, going from this, from the Nifty 50 to 
uh, I think is definitely worth the extra money. The 1.8 is plastic fantastic, the uh, Nifty 50 everybody loves. Uh, stepping into this is a, a lot better build quality, uh, much heavier, beefy, chunky, buttery, smooth, extra stop, a light goodness, just mwah. I love 50 millimeter 1.4. Uh, another camera body, I have my original Canon 60D. Now this is a great little camera. Um, I shot with it for years and I continued to enjoy it. The only reason I upgraded from this camera, as a matter of fact, is it doesn't have any autofocus during video, which is super annoying because uh, you want to shoot at a low aperture so that you can keep your ISO down here in my studio and uh, not being able to track yourself at that low aperture. You know, half the videos I would record, I'd be out of focus. It drove me crazy. And uh, I upgraded so for the video quality alone. But the stills on this 60D is fantastic. So you can actually pick these things up used um, on eBay, Amazon, and uh, uh, for like less than 400 bucks, so like three or 400 dollars. And it's a great camera, great camera body, uh, plenty of lots of lots of cool features, you know. Anyway, in this guy we got uh, a couple of lens hoods for the various lenses in the bag. And we have some cleaning cloth and a flash here. Now this little flash, this is from Ulta Photo. It is a super cheap flash. Um, I don't really do too much flash photography. I do have a wedding coming up, so I'll probably use it uh, at the wedding. But, uh, you know, I don't need it a super expensive flash. So this one just works for me. And uh, yeah, flash is a flash is a flash. So. I enjoy that. Uh, I'm kind of getting into flash photography a little bit more these days. I'm kind of digging it, uh, but it's just something that I don't typically do. So, you know, cheap flash is just fine for me. The 70-300 f4 to 5.6 Mark I. Now the Mark II is out and it's significantly better than this one. As a matter of fact, uh, the Mark II is the fastest focusing lens of any lens that's ever been made. At least that's a claim that was made uh, online, right? It was online, it has to be true, right? Uh, but it's a, a lot better than this one. Uh, I don't plan on up upgrading to that one because it still is f4 to f5.6. Uh, the sharpness out of this lens is plenty sharp. Uh, got image stabilized. It's great little lens. The only issue with it is that f4 to 5.6 is pretty dark. Um, so I want to upgrade this to the 70 to 200, which I'll lose a little bit of reach, which kind of blows, but uh, that F2.8 that I'm wanting the extra two stops of light on the tele end of this guy, extra two stops of light will mean I can raise, lower my ISO two stops more to get cleaner images. So I like that lens though. It's been great for me. Like, you know, I use it a lot, especially for landscape, you know, where you're, don't really worry about your shutter speed, but I do a lot of, uh, 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 not a lot, but I do some uh, youth softball sports shooting in the evenings, and it's almost unusable out at uh, f5.6. But anyway, the Rode Video Micro, this is a great little microphone. I don't think I've done a video on this guy actually before, but I should because it's so good. It's like 50 bucks or 60 bucks, and uh, I mean, it's just great. Great little microphone. It plugs directly into your camera. It's small, compact, no batteries. It just works and it just continues to work. So that's a great little microphone. Uh, now, uh, photography isn't just about camera and lenses. There are a bunch of other stuff that I like almost as much as my lenses, probably most of which are my filters. And here I have a couple of filters made by Platinum. Uh, they're not the greatest quality. They're not Lee filters by any stretch of the imagination, but they, I don't notice any reduction in sharpness uh, shooting through this glass. Um, there's some vignette, but that can be corrected in post. And there is a small uh, bluish or magenta uh, color cast, but that can also be corrected in post, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, I don't mind to say if I could save between the lens or the filters I have here, probably. I don't know, five or six hundred dollars if these were leaf filters. So these are work just fine for me. I enjoy them. So here we got a, a variable ND and a uh, circular polarizer 
In here, we got a couple more polarizers, different sizes. We got cleaning cloth, some adapter rings, a star filter. I like that one, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I like my filters. And these are from Platinum, like I said. Not too super expensive, but they, they're excellent little, little uh, filters. Uh, maybe I should do a video on, on the Platinum filters because uh, you can buy them at your local Best Buy, which is where I bought them, and they're pretty good. So. Anyway, then we got a couple of wireless remotes. Now this is the uh, RC6 wireless remote for Canon cameras. It works on just about every single camera. Camera uh, works on my 60D, it works on my 80D. Uh, you get it out of the box and you push the button and it works. You know, no setup, nothing like that. I did a video on this. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description for that. It's a great little uh, wireless release. This guy is an intervalometer. The ADD that I'm shooting this on has uh, built-in intervalometer, so I don't need this for that, but it does have a shutter lockup, so I can lock my shutter up, put that eight-stop ND filter on, and hold this open for, you know, six, eight, 10, 12 minutes, however long I want my exposure to be. Uh, so that's really cool, uh, as well as I can do uh, time lapses with my old body, my Canon 60D uh, there inside the bag. And then just on the top, uh, we got some extra Canon batteries, a GoPro battery, uh, some flashlight batteries, some other batteries for the intervalometer, uh, some body and lens caps. Quick tip, you can put a body and a lens cap together and uh, get a little knickknack storage case for memory cards or other little small stuff that would otherwise be hard to store in your bag. So that is all the things that I keep in my camera bag. Now I don't use all of these all the time and I don't hike with all of these all the time, but this is the stuff that I like uh, to get the job done. And uh, I enjoy each and every piece of this uh, kit, otherwise I wouldn't own it anymore. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, uh, as well as leave me a comment down below of what you guys are shooting with, um, you know, and maybe give me some suggestions for some future upgrades. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace. I like that one. That one was good. I guess the fifth time, I think. Close to the fifth fucking time I fucking shot that fucking video.